This laboratory is all about the RF mixer. In symbol, it looks like this diagram. It has two inputs and one output. The physical device looks like this, and mathematically, the mixer performs the multiplication operation. In application, the mixer implements the multiplication function. With sinusoidal functions, the most common inputs, this is the basis of the mixing operation. We see two sinusoidal equations, sine of alpha plus beta, sine of alpha minus beta. If we add these two signals together, the result of this addition is sine alpha plus beta plus sine alpha minus beta equal to two sine alpha cosine beta. The final terms end up canceling out because one is a plus and one is a minus. We can refine this result with this math. Moving the sine alpha cosine beta term to the left hand side and dividing by two on the other side, we end up with sine alpha cosine beta equal to one half sine alpha plus beta plus sine alpha minus beta. We can further refine this with one final step by separating out the alpha plus beta and alpha minus beta terms. The final result then is sine alpha cosine beta is equal to one half sine alpha plus beta plus one half sine alpha minus beta, which is a result we can directly implement in our electronics with the mixer. If we further refine this, for sinusoidal signals that we are used to seeing, we will have a result that we can work with in this laboratory. With the substitution of alpha equal 2 pi f a of t and beta 2 pi f b of t, we end up with the sine of 2 pi f a of t times cosine 2 pi f b of t equaling two terms, one half sine 2 pi f a plus f b of t, and one half sine two pi f a minus f b of t, the so-called sum and difference equations. So the multiplication of two sinusoids, sine, cosine, ends up with a sum and difference terms. This is a fantastic result for us as we have created two new frequency signals, f a plus f b, and FA minus FB from two individual sinusoids. So we have created new frequency signals with this math and this circuit operation. After turning on your spectrum analyzer, set the frequency range from 0 to 20 megahertz. Frequency, stop frequency, 20 megahertz. This will give you a span of 0 to 20 megahertz. Now it's your choice if you want to uh, adjust the resolution bandwidth. Remember that allows you to have a little better filtering, a little narrower filtering, and you get a more idealistic looking display. But uh, that part really doesn't matter. You'll be able to identify your signals quite easily. Now before you connect your signal to the spectrum analyzer, first you need to set up your signals. Initially we will start with a 10 megahertz signal and 0 dBm. If we see that is 223 millivolts RMS, on this generator, 10 megahertz now we are ready to put this on the spectrum analyzer. On the spectrum analyzer, the signal, if we press the peak button, we get a reading of 10 megahertz and minus 6 dBm. So how did our 223 millivolt signal become minus 6 dBm? The reason why is that the analyzer is a 50 ohm impedance. The generator is also a 50 ohm impedance, so the signal actually coming out of the generator
and making its way to the spectrum analyzer is reduced in half. When a voltage is reduced in half, the dBm level or the power level reduces by 6 dB because half the voltage becomes one quarter of the power and minus 6 dBm or six, minus 6 dB is one fourth the power level. So simply increase the signal level on your generator to make zero dBm. With the adjustment of the signal generator, we now have a signal at 10 megahertz and 0 0.03 dBm, very close to zero dBm. Do the same thing for your other generator, but set it up for two megahertz and zero dBm. The second generator in use will be the analog HP3312 meter, 3312A, set it for 2 megahertz. The level will be in this area with the selection of 1 and very close to 0 dBm. As we see, peak 1.966 megahertz minus 0.35 dBm. That is close enough for our setup. If you need to fine tune it, you can. This being an analog generator, uh, the frequency will be uh, drift more than the, the arbitrary waveform generator. Now we can put these signals into our mixer. So the local oscillator signal, or 10 MHz signal, is now connected to the L input. And the 2 MHz oscillator is connected to the R input and now we will connect the X input or the multiplier signal to the spectrum analyzer. With the output of our mixer connected to the spectrum analyzer, we see the multiplication. The first signal, if we press peak, is 8 megahertz minus 7 dBm and the second signal, signal next peak, is at 12 megahertz minus 7. So these are the two sum and difference products. Now we have other signals in here also. But remember these signals are 30 to 40 dB below our original, our main signals. If we select amplitude and linear, we can see the really we only have the two main signals of 8 megahertz and of 12 megahertz the two sum and difference frequency. It is your choice whether you prefer the linear display or the logarithmic display, but the log display is much more typical for RF applications than the linear display. Now, in the first part of the lab, we will change the frequency of the RF signal from 2 megahertz to 3 megahertz and on up. I have changed the frequency of the RF signal to be 4 megahertz. The difference frequency is now 6 megahertz minus 7 dBm and the sum frequency is 14 megahertz. So the sum and difference multiplication is working nicely. We still have some remaining other signals in, in the display but we can ignore them in terms of their our multiplication process. In the handout, you are asked to change the RF frequency up to 15 megahertz, from 2 to 15 megahertz. Now, I am showing the display with the RF input at 9 megahertz. So if I look at the peak, I see one at 1 megahertz and another at 19 megahertz. Now, if I increase the frequency one more megahertz, what would we expect? With the two signals both at 10 megahertz, we see the difference frequency is actually over mixed in with the zero indicator. And the sum frequency is up here at 20 megahertz. There's a variation in this signals because the two signals aren't exactly synchronized. 
if I increase the input frequency of the RF signal now to 11 megahertz, I will need a wider display. So change your frequency display and the stop frequency to 30 megahertz. Now our 20 megahertz signal appears at this point. It's variation in it due to the phasing. With an 11 megahertz input signal, I now see a 1 megahertz signal and a 21 megahertz signal. So how do we get 1 megahertz? Originally we had 10 megahertz and 11 megahertz. 10 minus 11 would be minus 1. But there is no such thing as negative frequency. The, oh, it is always the absolute value of the difference. So that would be 10 minus 11 is 1, minus 1, which becomes 1 megahertz. That can be confirmed with further measurements at 12 megahertz, 13 megahertz, 14 megahertz, and finally 15 megahertz. At 15 megahertz, then, of course, we see a signal at 5 megahertz, the difference, and 25 megahertz. Now we are ready to move on to the second part of the lab. Now in the next portion of the lab, you are asked to re return to your original 0 to 20 megahertz display with a 10 mega, 2 megahertz input signal. And again, we see our 8 megahertz and our 12 megahertz sum and difference signals. But I have reduced the input signal by 20 dB by dividing its value by 10. That causes a reduction in 20 dB. And we see, again, our sum and difference signals and very few other components. So mixers are used with smaller RF signals than we initially worked with, which contributed to the extra signals we were seeing in the display. I will return to that display just to remind you what it looked like. Here is the display, the original display with the high level RF signal of 0 dBm and we have multiple extra components. These are called intermodulation products and they are actually not a good thing and so we don't usually run our mixers at such a high level. In the next section of the laboratory you, you will adjust the local oscillator signal, not the RF signal. So the local oscillator is the higher frequency of 10 megahertz. So we'll need a wider range. So we will set up the span to be 30 megahertz. Now we see our sum and difference signals, sum, difference. Now I will change the frequency of the local oscillator to 15 megahertz. With the local oscillator at 15 megahertz, which is the middle signal, we can now see that the new two peak values, the sum frequency is 17 megahertz, 15 plus 2, and that means the difference frequency will 15 minus 2 or 13 megahertz. So the local oscillator will tend to move the signals up and down in the frequency range. Local oscillator at 15 megahertz, 16 megahertz, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Again, at this signal, the peak is at 27, and the next peak is at 23. 25 megahertz plus 2 is 27. 25 minus 2 is 23. And this is how our mixer works.